Last class, we talked about how to use standard reduction potentials to calculate the standard cell potential. And we sub subtract the reduction potential of the cathode uh, by the reduction potential of the anode. Um, so that was, we can use tables to figure out that E cell equals to stand standard reduction potential of the cathode minus, remember, the standard reduc reduction potential of the anode. But what about under non-standard conditions? Remember I said that for the standard conditions, our solutions of different ions are always going to be one molar. We have one bar. We have pure liquids. We have pure solids. So, but that's not always the case. So what about non-standard conditions? Non So to do that, we can go back to thermodynamics and what we already know about that. So we were able to previously express the free energy of your reaction, delta G naught, in terms of our standard cell potential. Negative n, the number of moles of electrons per reaction that you're doing, the Faraday constant, which is the coulombs per mole of electron, and the standard cell potential. But we also know from thermodynamics that delta G naught can be related to the equilibrium constant of a reaction negative R, the gas constant, 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin, times temperature in Kelvin, times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. So this is the concentration of products over reactants. So if we're doing a redox reaction, it's the products of the redox reaction over the reactants. So because of that, we can then now relate these two expressions. So now we know that negative NF standard cell potential is going to be equal to that same expression with the equilibrium constant. And then, so now we know we can express E cell in terms of RT over NF log K equilibrium constant. So uh, some notes. So again, this is the equilibrium constant. This is Faraday's constant. Faraday constant, for those of you who skipped my last video, number moles of electrons. And then this was gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Again, I will be giving you these constants, gas constant and Faraday constant, uh, on your exam. So you don't, you don't necessarily need to memorize them, but you should know them because you'll be doing calculations with them. And then this is the temperature in Kelvin. And due to all these, uh, I guess, different dimensional analysis, then we can then get this out in volts, aka joules per coulomb. OK, so this is how to convert our standard cell potential into equilibrium constant. And so what we also know is that uh, what this means is that if we know our standard cell potential, we can know how likely this reaction is going to go. So we said before that if our cell potential was greater than zero, so it's very positive, then based on free energy, the free energy would be very negative, so this reaction would be spontaneous. So the, but the, the, the same expression, this would imply also that K equilibrium constant would be greater than, greater than one. So what this means is that if we have a very positive cell potential, it's going to go and our reaction will proceed forward towards the product. On the other hand, if we have zero cell potential, our the reaction will not proceed either direction. Um, so basically, we can then relate these two values, which is great. Um, so what we also know here is that we said that the standard cell potential, we have concentrated one molar each in the starting conditions. So if we have like some you know, arbitrary reaction, let's say A goes to B, or A plus B, goes to C plus D. And then we have some sort of stoichiometry. So there's A equivalence of A, lowercase b equivalence of B, lowercase c equivalence of C, D of D. And then so our equilibrium constant is going to be C to the C, D to the D, over A to the A, B to the B. 
So for the standard cell, uh, cell potential, our initial concentrations are one molar. But then under non-standard conditions, we'll have different concentrations. So we could think about the reaction quotient. Uh, and then these will be like the non-equilibrium expression as above. So this will just be whatever current conditions these are at. So equilibrium constant, this is at equilibrium. And then this, of course, is not at equilibrium. So from thermodynamics, we can actually relate our non-standard free energy, so delta G, so not delta G naught, as uh, to delta G. So delta G under non-standard conditions equals the standard free energy um, plus RT natural log of Q. So by having this difference, this extra reaction quotient, so let's say we're, we have maybe more A and B than C or D, then we can have a new free energy expression. And then because of that, we can then derive our nurse expression. So here we have our non-standard free energy, so we can have our non-standard cell potential. So E cell equals negative NF, the standard cell potential, plus the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the reaction quotient. And then from there, if we divide by negative NF, then we can have an expression for this, the non-standard cell potential. And this will be just basically a, a, some value changed from the standard cell potential. So this will be, if we divide by NF, or negative NX rather, then we'll get RT over NF natural log of Q. So this is a very important expression. So this is called the Nernst equation. So what this means is that if we know our standard cell potential, which we can derive, or we can you know, define from our table, we can just do a subtraction. So this is from, from our table, from table of values. And then if we know Q, if we can measure the concentration some other way, or we have some set concentration that we started off at, then we can know our actual cell potential, um, even under non standard conditions. So um, let's do an example of this. Let me quickly erase over here. So suppose I try to make a cell, um, and I have two beakers. So here's one beaker on the right, which will be, let's say we're just using actually the same reaction. So if we have solid copper electrode, again, phase boundary, with aqueous copper ions, but this time, instead of having standard conditions, aka one molar, what we actually have would be 0.1 molar. And then on the other side, we have the exact same solution, but we actually have one molar this time of the copper two ions, and then again a copper electrode. Oops, excuse me. So this is what's known as a concentration cell. So we don't have we don't have two different redox reactions going on. They're both the same redox reaction, um, but because of the concentration difference, we can still get current to flow. Oops, oh, that's cut off. So again, on the left side is our anode. We're doing an oxidation reaction. On the right side, we're doing a cathode. But our fully balanced reaction is going to be kind of a self-exchange reaction where we have copper 2 uh, adding to copper solid 
And then this goes back and forth. Two copper. So kind of the question is, how can we find the salt potential? So here is where a great application of the Nernst equation. We could first do it if you want to do just the half reactions. So let's say we're going to just do it for the half reactions. So first, we could try to find out the standard reduction potential of the cathode. E cathode. This is the right side. So we know that our standard potential for our copper 2 plus copper couple, this is, we just read off a table. So this is going to be, um, let me check, 0.34. volts versus the standard hydrogen electrode. And then so we can use the Nernst equation here to then find uh, our cathode. I guess I shouldn't have put the, the circle here, so let's take that out. So our potential of the cathode here is going to be to the standard potential of this copper 2 plus copper couple minus RT over NF natural log of Q. So in this case, Q is going to be uh, products over reactants. So again, we're doing reduction potential. So the reduction potential is of a copper 2 plus, plus 2 electrons going to copper 0. And therefore, our products over reactants, Q equals 1 over copper 2 plus. This one is because copper is a solid. And then, so in this case, for the right side of our uh, cell here, where we have one molar, Q equals 1. And then, so therefore, our E cathode just equals our E naught of copper 2 plus copper. Because what happens is the log of 1 is going to be 0, so this goes to 0. Great. So for, let's say I'll do this in green, our E anode, this is going to be equal to, it's the same half reaction, we're reducing copper, so that it's going to be equal to our E naught, copper 2 plus, copper minus RT over NF, natural log of, in this case, it's going to be 1 over 0 0.1 molar. And then, so this turns out to be equal to um, 0.31 volts. So this is 0 0.34 minus 0 0.03, which equals 0 0.31 volts. Uh, I didn't do this, this actual expression, but in this case, we know that n equals 2. And then we substitute out these red, uh, various numbers, and then we get out to the final expression. So then our final cell potential is we know our non-standard cell conditions equals E cathode minus E anode, which equals, so this equals 0.34, 0 0.34 minus 0 0.31, and this equals 0 0.03 volts. So that's how we can calculate the cell potential for a concentration cell, which is under non-standard conditions. So again, by having this difference in concentrations between our two sides of our cell, we can still have overall a uh, voltage that will drive current. Um, so this is the half-reaction method. We could also do the same method using the entire cell. Um, So in this case, we'll just use this full balanced electrochemical equation. So for the full cell, So in this case, again, I'll just write it. Again, I'll write the same thing over here. We're going from copper two plus 
plus copper to So in this case, we know that our standard cell potential here, E naught cell, is going to be equal to E naught of the cathode minus E naught of the anode. In this case, the problem is that both of the both half reactions are identical. If we break this up into half reactions, one of them is copper two plus plus two electrons going to copper zero. The other one is the reverse. So we know that our, cell our standard cell potential, if both of these copper ion concentrations were one molar, would be zero. But uh, so now we just need to find out Q. So if we know Q, this is going to be equal to products. So it's going to be one for the copper solid times, times the concentration of copper two plus on one side. And then the other side is going to be over a copper two plus times one. And then, so, oops. so overall, if we're, so let's say on the left side, sorry, this is the left side, the copper two plus, this is the reduction, this is the cathodic reaction. So we know that our concentration of copper is one molar. And then on the right side of the, uh, example, this is going from copper zero to copper two plus. That's the oxidation, so this is the anodic side. So that's the 0.1 molar. So overall, our Q is going to be equal to 0.1 over 1. And then therefore, our final cell concentration under non-standard conditions is going to be E cell equals E naught minus RT over NF log Q. So this is going to be equal to, which equal to zero minus R T over two F log point one, and then so overall this is going to be equal to, uh, well this is got to be equal to plus point oh three. I don't have a calculator on me, but. What we do know is that a log of a, of a less than one number, that'd be negative, times a negative. So overall, this is going to be a positive number. So we'll still get a positive cell potential, and this reaction will be spontaneous. Okay.